hello guys welcome to a new video and in this video we are going um, to reconfigure single area OSPF with the boson net sim or network simulator for the boson software and if you guys want to get this amazing software I'm going to provide a link on the description below so you guys can get this and this configuration of a single area OSPF is for the end core um, and the link that I'm going to provide in the description, I'm going to add it for, um, they have one for the CCNA and they also have for one for the Encore. And I really love this um, software because it really aligns with the Cisco um, certification and all the questions that they ask you are really based on the certification. So we are going to be configuring uh, single, la uh, single area OSPF. So we are going to select that. And we are going to load this lab. Um, I'm going to close this so I can have more space available. The lab instructions, I'm going to float it. So if we right click on it, press float, and I'm going to put on the right side um, so I can use it. So that's going to be on the right side. And here's my topology. So let's go ahead and go over the, um, the lab instructions and let's see what we need to do. So in this lab, the objective is to configure the network to use open source path first OSPF for single area. All OSPF rou uh, routers will be in area zero, so they are all going to be in the same area zero. Um, here's the lab topology. They give you um, the IP addresses, interfaces, and all that good stuff. I, re I would really love if they add those uh, the interfaces and also the IP addresses for those interfaces in the lab topology. Because if they do, um, I won't have to go back and forward uh, or go up and see which IP address um, it's on this interface because we're gonna have to refer back to this lab topology in the lab instructions. Uh, I wish they added it to the lab topology. Hopefully they do. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. It, it gives you a summary of the commands that we are going to be using. Um, enable and exit, show IP OSPF, show IP OSPF database, show IP OSPF interface, neighbor protocols, show IP router show running config. So the first task that we need to do is to configure OSPF on P1R1, P1R2, and P1R3 using a process ID of 1. So they are going to be in the same process ID. All interfaces, including loopbacks, should be placed in, in area 0. So we need to do that. Um, so since we need to do it on P1R1, I already have it, the CLI over here. Uh, so I need to refer back, like you can see, you need to refer back to see what IP addresses you need to configure. So we can configure 192.168.1.1 slash 28 for the loopback. For the serial interface, 192.168.1.3 slash 28. So we can have a slash 24, 192.168.0 slash 24 configure and that will take the loopback and the serial interface so we can only do it once um, and then for the fast internet um, we are going to configure this one over here so let's go ahead and start let's go ahead and do a config uh need to do enable first config terminal router ospf remember process id1 all of them is in process id1 um, so we are going to add network 192.8.1.0. Um, Wildcard is going to be slash 24, so 2 by 5. And they're all going to be in the same area, 0. Then we need to do the fast Ethernet 1, which is 10.1.100.100.0. So 10.100.100.0.0.0.0.255. Right? And it's going to be in the same area, 0. There we go. So we have configured that. Uh, P2R1 is a way to configure with SPF. So whenever we enter this command, it should form a neighbor adjacency with P, um, P2R1. Okay. Um, so we have enabled it in P1R1. Now we need to do it in P1R2 and then P1R3. So let's go ahead and go to select. You're going to double click on P1R2 so you can get the CLI. We're going to enable. Config terminal, router, OSPF, press ID is one for all of them. 
Uh, let's go ahead and refer back to the lab instructions. So we need to add this loopback address 192.168.1.17.1.34.1.49. So again, we can also add it to the slash 24 and we can take all of those IP addresses. So we can do a network uh, 192.168.1.0.0.255 area 0. So this one, this network is going to take the loopback, the fast Ethernet, and the serial interface as well. So we have done that. Now we need to go to P103, and P103 has 192.168.1.15, so it only has one. Let's go ahead over here. Let's go ahead and enable. Config terminal. They're going to go to router, OSPF, press ID 1 for all of them. Network 192.168.1.0.0.0.0.255, area 0. There you go. So if you go to P101, you can see that we have formed two neighbor relationship, one with P1 or 2, and another one with P2 or 1. You can see it over here. So that is good. Now let's go ahead and go. We have done task number one. Let's go ahead. What is task number two? So task number two, um, we are going to use the show IP OSPF command. So on P1 or 1, display OSPF process information. Use the output to answer the following question. So what is the router ID? So we need to answer these questions. And that's why I really like this um, software. So let's go ahead and end it. Show IP OSPF command. And this show IP OSPF command is going to give you all the information that you need. And if you want to see everything, you can just expand the CLI, right? So it will give you a bigger picture. Um, so what is the router ID? So what is the router ID? The router ID is 192.168.1.1. Why did the router select this router ID? Well, that IP address is the IP address of the loopback address. Um, and the way that the OSPF selects its router ID is by first, the loopback have a priority. So the loopback IP addresses have a priority. And it's going to take the lowest IP of the loopback addresses. If you don't have a loopback address, it's going to take the lowest IP address of any of those interfaces um, and if they um, yeah and, and it goes by um, IP addresses or by priority so they all have the same priority and since they all have the same priority it is going to land um, into the loopback address okay um, so how many times has the router executed the shortest path first SPF um, so if you go down here you can see that the SPF algorithm has been executed eight times. So eight times for C, D, how many interfaces are in area zero? There are in the backbone area zero, there is three interfaces. You can see right here, right? So three interfaces, we only have one area. Area zero, the backbone area, three interfaces. So for D, three interfaces, how many areas does this um, router participate in there's only one so one is only the we only we are only participating in area zero which is the backbone so we are done with test two we have answered all the questions now we are going to use the show ip ospf neighbor command so on p101 display ospf neighbor information use the output to answer the questions in this task so how many neighbors does p101 have so let's do the show ip ospf neighbor mm -hmm. And you can see right here that we have two neighbors, 192.168.2.1, uh, which is that two, that one is P2R1. And then we have 192.168.1.17, which is um, P1R2. Okay, <clears throat> so we have two neighbors. What does the full state indicate? The full indicates that they have form a neighbor relationship. They are fully formed a neighbor relationship. It is not in the units, it is not processing, it's not doing anything, it is full. They already they have already been established. Uh, which neighbor on the fast Ethernet zero slash zero interface is the designated router? So which neighbor on that interface on the fast Ethernet zero slash zero is the designated router? So the designated router on this interface 
is 1 and 2, that 1 is 8, that 2, that 1. Uh, why is there no DR or backup the center router on the BDR on P1R, um, P1R1 zero interface? Because um, you already form, um, it, they, we can only have one um, destinator router, I believe, per area. And since we already picked this one, because it probably has the lower, it probably has a lower IP address than this one, then this one was selected. And we can only have one destinator router. Okay. And why there's no backup destinator router? Um, why there's no backup destinator router on this serial interface? Because that is a good question. So why there is no BDR or DR? Well, there's no DR because the DR was already selected. Why there's no backup destinator router? That's also um, a good question. So if you know the why we don't have any backup destinator router, just leave your answer on the um, video on the comment below and just let me know why there's no uh, DR. I already said the DR, but why there's no backup destinator router on P1 or 1 zero interface? Go ahead and let me know. So we are done with task three. We are going to task four. We are going to use the show IP or SPF database. Show IP or SPF database. So how many link states? advertisement LSA types are shown. So we have two, we have the router states and we have the network link states area zero for area zero, both of them. Um, so we have two, what type of router generates a router link, um, a router link LSA. So the router <clears throat> LSA, which is a type one is, um, that happens is, um, when the router announces its presence and lists the links to other routers or networks in the same area. Um, so what type of routers? All the routers that are participating are doing a router link LSA type one. What type of router generates a network link? Well, the network link is, this, this one is generated by the designated router. Okay, so this one is done by the designated router. So you need to remember that. Okay, so now we are up to task number five and we have a lot of questions. So we're going to use the show IP or SPF interface. Show IP or SPF interface. Okay, so we have it right here. So how many interfaces are configured for OSPF? So we have the serial interface, we have one. We have the loopback interface, zero, we have two. And then we have the fast ethernet interface. So we have three interfaces configured for OSPF. What is the router ID used for every interface? So for fast ethernet is the router ID is 192.168.1.1. For the loopback is 192.168.1.1. And for the serial is also doing the same. So we have the same router ID because they are all coming from the same um, router ID, of course. How often are hellos sent out? Uh, they are sent out every 10 seconds, as you can see right here. So they are sent out every 10 seconds. What is P1R1's FastEthernet interface address? The IP address of that interface is 10.100.100.1 slash 24. Um, what is the cost for using the FastEthernet 0 slash 0 interface? The cost is one. What is the priority number for the faster than zero slash zero interface? The priority is one, as you can see right here. Um, and what is the IP address of the DR? The DR is the designated router. So um, the IP address of the designated router. So if we go to right here, the designated router is one eight two that one eight that two, that one. Okay, here we go. That two, that one. Um, and what is the IP? What is the interface? I what is the interface IP address of the designated router? So 
the IP of the destination, what is the IP of the IP address of the destination router, what is the interface IP of the destination router. Um, so since it is, so the interface address is 10.100.100.2. Okay, that's what it's coming from. What is the I what is the IP address of the backup designated router? So the backup designated router is 192.168.1.1. So that means that we are now able to answer question the one that I ask you. Um, why there is no backup uh, designated router on that in serial interface because it is uh, because it is local. That's why there was like a dash. Uh, so I believe that's what it is. If I'm wrong, then just leave a comment on the description. Then just leave a comment um, below. All right. So what is the interface IP address of the back of the senator router? So the back of the senator router has an interface of 10.100.100.1. So it is the local IP address. Um, uh, what is p one r one zero interface IP address? The zero interface of that the IP address it's 182.168.1.33 slash 24 and it is in area 0. What area is P1 or 1 zero interface in? Area 0, we already said that. And what is the cost for using 0, zero, zero slash 0 interface? The cost is 64. So that was it for this video guys. We were able to answer all the questions. We went over tasks 1 through 5. And you can see that they ask you a lot of good questions. And like I said, if you want a, if you want to purchase this Boston Net Network Simulator for either the Encore or the CCNA, I'm going to leave a link on the description below so you guys can go ahead and buy it if you guys wanted to. It is really good because they ask a lot of good questions. And if you don't know the answer to the questions, um, it is because. Um, you need to go back and read the book again because you don't really know it. Uh, because this um, this questions that I ask you are based on the Encore exam, so you need to know this. You need to be able to answer these questions because they might show up in the. Um, they're, they're probably they're definitely going to show up in the Encore. Um, they're not really going to show up in the CCNA because there's not. Uh, you don't have to com really to configure OSPF for the CCNA. But like I said, it's a really good software. I really, really like it. I really enjoy it. I like what Boston is doing. Um, and the only thing that I would like to have is to show the interfaces over here and also the IP addresses. And when you are done with the configuration, what you want to do is you want to verify that your configuration is correctly. You're going to select the great lab, this one right here. And this one will give you if you it will tell you if you configure everything um, successfully. So as you can see right now, I was able to complete this lab successfully. It will tell you right here if if something was wrong. It will tell you at which one of this. It will not have a check mark if something is wrong on P one R one. It will not have a check mark or P one R two. It will not have a check mark. So you can also go to the P one R one and see that you did it correctly. Um, if you go to SPF. You can see that we configure this and it was correctly. And if it was not correctly, it will tell you what you are missing. And it will also tell you the solution of what you needed to do. If you needed to remove something, I think it shows in red. And if if you need if you're missing something, I think it shows either in blue or green. But it will tell you what you were missing. But since we have check marks on all of them and it told you that you completed the lab successfully, you are good to go.